stop it. This is not a trap game for the Eagles. They're going to be just fine and most likely 4-0 come Sunday afternoon. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome into the Thomas Mott Show on a Saturday, getting ready for Eagles and Jaguars. This is a very interesting game, and a lot of people, especially the national media, are predicting to be a trap game for the Eagles. And oh my gosh, the one undefeated team left in the NFL will be undefeated no more next week. Stop it. We're going to get into why Philadelphia should be just fine in the matchup against the Jaguars. Now, I'm not saying Jacksonville is not a good football team. I'm not saying Doug Peterson has some extra motivation or he's going to, you know, get Trevor Lawrence ready to go. Like, I'm not saying this is going to be a rollover game. But if you believe Philadelphia is as legit as their 3-0 record and as legit as their blowout win against the Vikings and their dominant 9 sack performance against Carson Wentz and the Washington Commanders, this should not be a problem. The Jacksonville Jaguars should not be a problem. Also, you guys know that I'm supposed to be at the game tomorrow. This was filmed yesterday, and so I'm in Philadelphia right now. By the time you're watching this, barring some sort of flight delay, I should be in Philadelphia. So I will be at this game, and hopefully I won't eat my words. Because if we lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars, my roommate Alex, who is going with me to this game, who's in Philadelphia right now with me, as a Jaguars fan, will not let me hear the end of it. And I don't want that to happen on the frigging long flight home from Philly to ATL, where I live in Atlanta. Okay, I want to start with um, this fan nation, Jaguar Reports. It's a Jaguars blog website talking about Eagles versus Jaguars, five pressing questions on Doug Peterson's return to Philadelphia. But I thought it was interesting from an Eagle and Jaguar perspective to see what they had to say regarding this matchup. Side note, National League story of the day in terms of the NFL games to watch tomorrow that comes up at the end, so stay tuned for that and thumbs up the video. Okay, let's go through these one by one. Let's just break it down. First off, number one problem for the opposing defense, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, or Jalen Hurts. Now, we're, again, going to ignore what they talk about in terms of Edward Cracks, however you say his last name, in terms of his actual words. Let's give you mine. Number one problem for opposing defenses, all of the above. This is what people are seemingly forgetting when they start to talk about this is a trap game for the Philadelphia Eagles. Is the Jaguars' defense good? Yes, the Jaguar defense has some really good pass rushers. They have a great young linebacker in Devin Lloyd. Where they struggle is on the backside. And this is where Philadelphia exposes you from an offensive perspective. If your defense does not have serious cover corners, even if they do, but if you don't have serious cover corners like the Vikings did not and like the Washington Commanders did not, you will be torched all game long by A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. It's just that simple. This is the beauty of having not one elite receiver, but two. Because a lot of teams have, like, one decent cornerback, but not a lot of teams have uh, two decent cornerbacks. Very few have two really good cornerbacks that can match up man for man on both of the elite receivers on a given football team. And so when they ask the main problem for opposing defenses, sure, Jalen Hurts and the great season he's having so far, running, passing, everything above, is a serious threat. And there's no reason that they should be, uh, you know, thinking it's going to be easy against him. But A.J. Brown plus Devontae Smith, they've given teams fits this year, dating all the way back to the Lions game week one. Should be, a, should be no difference against a lackluster uh, Jacksonville Jaguars secondary. Number two, if the Eagles win or lose on Sunday, what do you think is the main reason why? The main reason why would be that this offense doesn't score in, in the fourth quarter. And really, more so, this offense is actually needed in the fourth quarter. Now, they're in the Lions game. They needed to get a couple of first downs. But essentially, the offense was fine. They scored 38 points. The last two games, they've had such dominant performances through the first half, the first three quarters of these football games, that the offense is just not really needed needed anything special in the fourth quarter. The Commanders game, the Eagles were up big. You go back to the uh, the uh, Vikings game, Philadelphia was a big... If Philadelphia were to lose this game, the only way I could see that happening is if it's a close one through three and a half, and then you get to the fourth quarter, and Philadelphia, yet to be tested, gets a little bit sloppy as they try to press to go to 4-0. and Maybe the pressure of going 4-0 and is also somewhat of a factor in this one, although I don't see it. I, I think... I think Philadelphia, it's just a good football team. They're a well-coached football team. They should be fine. If they win, if they were to lose, in turn to answer this question here, it would be because you get to the fourth quarter, you make some mistakes because you haven't been in a high-pressure situation at that moment in a football game so far this year. But it's not like you expect that to happen from the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, next one here. How much has the return of Doug Peterson been talked about this week? It's been talked about a lot. But to me, it's not a big story. And then I obviously mentioned this uh, in the Thomas Mott show yesterday, talking about a Doug Peterson reap praise on Philadelphia. He reap praise on Nick Sirianni. He reap praise on, on, on Jalen Hurts. He's the, court, the coach that drafted Jalen Hurts back in 2020. I, I don't see this as that big of a deal. It's a fun storyline. But this is by no means like a Doug Peterson is going to come in here. Oh, my gosh. It's like revenge of the Sith trying to go ahead and beat down the team that 
fired him. It wasn't a lot of animosity. I think they just kind of butted heads on Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz was a very polarizing person inside the Eagles organization, whether you're a pro or against him. And in the end, Howie Roseman won out, whether it was right or not, who knows. But both sides have landed in really good spots. Doug Peterson had a year off to kind of reset, rethink, retool his overall style as a coach. It's working fantastic in a great place in Jacksonville with a star young quarterback and a good running game and nice receivers on the outside and a decent offensive line. Like, like he's got a great set setup right now in the AFC South. And I think Philadelphia with Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts likewise has a great setup. And so I, this whole revenge stuff is not a big deal. And trust me, Eagle fans are going to cheer Doug Peterson tomorrow because all you have to do is look at Doug enter Lincoln Financial and then look up on the right corner and see the 2020, uh, sorry, 2017 Super Bowl banner and the cheering should come because that's who actually got you the banner, right? Uh, okay, which Jaguar is seen as a player the Eagle must stop to win games? It's got to be James, James Robinson and Travis Etienne. He actually says that here, but my own thoughts here is, yeah, James Robinson has been really good. Most people see him as just like a number two on some fantasy football team uh, on in, in your league. He's an elite back. He had over 100 yards last week against the Chargers. He had a rushing touchdown. Philadelphia seemingly has done a great job the past two weeks against the run. I think this is a good test against a pretty good run-first offensive line. They pass protect well, too, but a good run offensive line in Jacksonville for the Eagle defense, who got gashed in Week 1, but it was Week 1, and it was DeAndre Swift. Uh, I think this is a really good test for them to prove that they're not just good against the pass, but really good against opposing uh, really good running backs. And I, I, again, you said re really good a bunch there, but James Robinson, he is pretty darn good. Prediction for, for the game, I've seen a lot of 24-17. I think Philadelphia gets over 28. I say 31-20 is going to be the final score of this one. I, I really feel like Philadelphia is an elite football team, and elite football teams don't lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And that's not a slight against Jacksonville at all. I think Jacksonville is a very fine football team, and they've had some really impressive wins. They could be 3-0. I mean, like, 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 look at this uh, overall schedule so far from Jacksonville. You had a fourth quarter lead against Carson Wentz. You blanked the Colts, who are a mess, and then you beat up on the injured Chargers. But what the Jacksonville Jaguars do really, really well, at least have done really, really, really well so far this year, this number right here, zero sacks of Trevor Lawrence. They've only given up a couple. Lawrence got hit so much last year that as a young rookie quarterback, he starts to kind of see some ghosts. This is the Zach Wilson term. He starts to kind of force footballs into tight windows, trying to get the ball out of his hands because sacks are terrible, right? We know that. They're pass protecting way better, and it starts with the run. You see James Robinson, they want to give him 17 carries. They want to give ETN 13 to 15 carries. They want to rush for over 100 yards. They will try to do that, but that creates more calm clean and cool pockets for Trevor Lawrence, and that's how they're winning games. I'm not sliding the Jaguars by any means, but no one considers the Jacksonville Jaguars the elite of the elite in the AFC. This isn't Buffalo. This isn't Miami whenever two is healthy. This isn't Baltimore. You know, This isn't the Chiefs. This is not the elite of the elite teams. Plus, the Chargers were pretty banged up last week. Poor Justin Herbert has cracked ribs, not as number one receiver. Joey Bosa goes down in that one. The Chargers were really banged up. No Rayshon Slater, and so I respect the Jaguars as a possible wildcard team in the AFC but nothing more. You know, maybe they're going to win their division, and that would, I mean, they would host a wild card game, but still a wild card team. And so if you believe Philadelphia is as elite as I think that they are, and a lot of people say they're the best team in the NFC, I've said that they have the best roster, they should win these games handily. And if they lose on Sunday or lose tomorrow, by the time you're watching this, then maybe, just maybe, there is uh, a little bit of a step back that Eagle fans, we should go ahead and take. And whether we'll do that or not, we'll find out. But you can't tell me you've not watched three straight Eagle games and gotten to a point where you think they're really good, but they're going to lose to the Jags. It's just not possible. You, you cannot, one cannot be the same with the other. Will Philadelphia lose at some point? Yes, they will lose at some point. At some point, they're going to have a bad day, whether it's, you know, next week against the Cardinals or the week after against the Cowboys or maybe the Steelers by the time you know, Kenny Pickett's going to play or uh, the Packers on Sunday Night Football. You're not going to be the undefeated Dolphins from 1985. It's not going to happen. But what will happen is this team continues to show that they are really, really good. And in doing so, they should beat up on a lot of these average to slightly above average football teams. So I go 31 to 20. Eagles win. They look good. And maybe this is the day that they have a massive day on the ground. They've had some good ground days so far, but I'm talking like 200 yards on the ground. And Miles Sanders just goes buck wild and runs all over the place.
Um, this is this is a great game, but there are also a lot of other games that we want to get to. We'll switch over to the national story of the day here in just one second. First, though, uh, I appreciate you guys. If you guys like the Thomas Mott Show, if you like me having my unfiltered thoughts on, on all things in the world of the National Football League, whether it's the Eagles or not, hit that red subscribe button. I would appreciate it. Uh, and thumbs up. Apparently, YouTube loves the thumbs up button, so you should smash it. You should hit that thumbs up button like 8 billion times and make sure we get as many likes as possible on the Thomas Mott Show. Okay, national story today. Let's go through some of the other games to watch because if you're like me you have a uh, NFL Sunday ticket and so you are watching the red zone maybe you don't have an NFL Sunday ticket but other games do matter let's go through the ones that I think are really important and the ones that are not so important starting Viking Saints I think Minnesota gets back on track I think the Saints are not as good as a lot of people thought they would be going into this season the Vikings to me though are still kind of this b-list team that is scary at times because of their receiving threats, but Philly beating them and getting that win and the head-to-head -head notch is fantastic. Give me the Vikings in that one. Browns-Falcons is kind of a snoozer, although Atlanta had a nice win against Seattle last week. Can they follow up and get to 2-2? Two and two? They haven't been 500 in a very long time. A real chance against the you know the, the run-heavy Browns, but not a very scary Browns offense led by Jacoby Brissett. Commanders, Cowboys, you got to be big Carson Wentz fans today. I mean, literally on Sunday, big Carson Wentz fans because you do not want Dallas to be 3-1 and one because Dak might come back next week, the week after. For sure, by week six, he's going to be here against Philly on Sunday night. You have got to root against the Cowboys on this one. We need Cooper Rush to look like a backup quarterback big time. Commander fans, go Carson Wentz. Uh, Seahawks, Lions, I think Detroit gets back on track here. I think Seattle goes to 1-3. and three. That whole fluke win against Denver was like way too overblown there. We thought Geno Smith was good. He's not that good. G give me the give me the Lions in that one. Titans, Colts, is AFC. We don't care. Bears, Giants. I, 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 this is a battle of two bad football teams, but I think the Giants probably come out on top on that one. Have you seen the completion percentage and the actual completions by Justin Fields so far this year? The Bears are... They might be the worst 2-1 team ever in the National Football League, and that's that, that's that's saying something because there have been some bad ones, but the fact they're 2-1 uh, blows my mind. Jet Steelers, the only real storyline there is Zach Wilson will make his debut starting here in Week 4, as Joe Flacco has been very Flacco-esque over the first four weeks, three weeks of the NFL season. Will they finally play Kenny Pickett? Probably not because Mike Tomlin's very stubborn, but Pickett, if they go to 1-3 and three and lose to the Jets, I bet Pickett starts there in Week 5. Bills-Ravens is your big AFC matchup of the afternoon. As Buffalo comes off that loss against Miami, that's a good quarterback battle, but it's more of a question of can Baltimore's defense hold, hold on to the Bills because the defense has been giving up a bunch of points. Six touchdowns to two a couple of weeks ago. Chargers-Texans, uh, snoozer there. I think Cardinals-Panthers is also a snoozer. I, I, these two teams are very, very... I, I'm not a Cardinal guy. We'll talk about the Cardinals next week uh, on, on the Thomas Mott Show, and maybe Kyler causes some problems, but the Cardinals are not that great. Packers will be uh, uh, taking on the Patriots. There will be no Mac Jones in that one, and so I think it's Brian Hoyer the longtime Brady backup to start. Broncos Raiders, the Raiders, it says a must win. I mean, this is a must win for everybody involved. Derek Carr, uh, J Josh McDaniels, this is a must win for them. And then your Sunday Nighter, which will take place in Tampa, Florida, following the uh, hurricane that took place this weekend. Uh, they seemingly seem like Tampa did not get as hit as bad as they thought that it would, and so the game will go on. Do the Bucks, does, does the Bucs offense do anything? Julio Jones is a game-time decision on that one. The, the, can they even score? I mean, that's been a massive issue for the Bucs so far this year. And finally, the big NFC one, in my opinion, that matters is Rams-Niners. Garoppolo looked terrible on the road in Denver. Is he just not that great? And are the Niners actually in big trouble? Even though I thought Garoppolo was going to be just fine. Or uh, will they come back to life and get uh, the better one up here in Santa Clara on the Rams? It'd be kind of fun if the Niners did win that one because then the Rams go to 2-2 two and two and you want that to happen uh, if you are an Eagle fan. So there you go. There's your look at some of the other games taking place on Sunday. You got to be a big Commander fan. Put on your Washington cap. Put on your old Carson Wentz jerseys. Root for the Commanders in this one because you want Dallas to not go to 3-1 and one as uh, they're winning these games with Cooper Rush. It's nuts. Um, okay, there you go. There is your national story of the day, as we always do here on the Thomas Mott Show. Again, I can't wait for the game tomorrow. I'm hoping the rain stays off, and I hope Philadelphia, as we talked about at the beginning of today's show, I hope that they really go out and prove. And they've already proven to me that they're good. Like, you could lose to the Jaguars and still be considered a good football team, right? No one's going to abandon ship on Philadelphia if they lose to Jacksonville. But this is a average AFC team. This is not an elite AFC team. Therefore, Philadelphia is an elite NFC team. Logic would suggest they should go ahead and win this game. Give me 31 or maybe 30 to 20. I'll go 31 20 as my final score. And I'm actually going to do a full video on going to the game. So stay tuned for that. Thumbs up and subscribe. That's it for the Thomas Mott Show. See you guys in the next one.